Great Senator Rand Paul is going to be coming on from Kentucky, and he's going to continue this conversation, by the way, about raising taxes, lowering revenues, not cutting spending. Why are deficits growing? Why are we borrowing faster than we're growing the entire economy? And is any of that ever going to change? I don't know that it's ever going to change. I don't think Joe Biden, maybe Joe Biden is going to try to tell us. Uh, here is the aforementioned Senator Rand Paul, a quick change artist. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're doing great. Uh, you probably don't even need a microphone. You think there's going to be any serious budget work? done in this State of the Union tonight in that message? Only if it's talking about busting the budget further. I uh, mean, they, yes. there won't be anybody talking about cutting spending. There won't be anybody talking about the fact that we spend six trillion and bring in about four and a half trillion. There's a little bit of a mismatch. There won't be anybody talking about that the tax revenue only covers the entitlements, nothing else. The entire budget that Congress votes on, which is about 1.5 trillion, is all borrowed. There's only enough tax revenue to pay for Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and a few other entitlements, mm -hmm. Social Security. That's about all there is. Everything else is borrowed. And that's why even on our side, I get tired of Republicans saying, oh, don't talk about entitlements. You know, Trump did some of this. Don't talk about entitlements. Some of the Republican conservatives in the House, don't talk about entitlements. You have to talk about entitlements because that's two-thirds of the spending. We have, we, you have a spending bill before the House this whole, the border and Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan and so forth. But putting aside the foreign policy issues just for one second, uh, it's over $100 billion. I don't hear anyone talk about pay-fors. Whatever happened to the concept of pay? You spend a buck here, you should cut a buck there. What happened to that? It was one of the things that I liked when Speaker Johnson first came in. He introduced aid to Israel, and he paid for it by taking away money that Biden was going to allocate mm -hmm. to the IRS. First time, really, since I've been up here, that someone said foreign aid should be paid for, even to our friends. But it seems to be somewhat backpedaled and abandoned. And I fear that ultimately the House will bring up the $100 billion. Senate has passed it with big government Republicans and then all the Democrats. Were there pay-fors in the Senate? No pay-fors. No, no, no pay-fors. Nothing. I mean, how, you just can't do that. Well, they do it the week that the chairman of the Federal Reserve comes out and says that the debt problem's urgent. Mm. Jamie Dimon comes out and says there's a debt problem. You've got all these figures of Wall Street saying there's a debt problem. And what does Congress react by doing? Spending $100 billion that we have to borrow. So let me get this right. The the budget side is spending money like there's no tomorrow. Really, nothing's changed. The trajectory hasn't changed at all. We're running six, seven deficits, deficits percent of GDP with a low unemployment rate in peacetime. And the Fed, on the other side, is supposed to be restraining monetary excess. So the fiscal side is inflating. The monetary side is restraining. That just doesn't strike me as something that can be sustained over a period of time. No, it isn't. And it's always, you know, which is which comes first. Is it the Fed creating the problem or the Congress? I think it's the Congress, frankly. The Fed mm -hmm. reacts to what Congress does, mm -hmm. and the Fed does what it has to do. And they always buy our debt, and they always will. It just is a question of whether the dollar will be worth as much yesterday as it is today. But they will always buy the debt. And then when they buy too much, and then all of a sudden things get out of hand and prices are going up, then they'll say, oh, we got to do something. And that's where they are now. They are, they're trying to control inflation, but they're at cross purposes. You're right. Congress continues to spend. The Fed is worried about it. And the Fed will even say we're worried about it. But what does Congress do? Keep spending. All the spending bills, and this is my problem now with Speaker Johnson, he's allowing all these spending bills to go through at the same rate. Hmm. In fact, it's above the caps that McCarthy set. Conservatives were mad that McCarthy had a crummy deal on the debt deal a year ago. Johnson's actually going to spend money above the McCarthy deal. What happened to the 1 percent cut if it didn't get done by April? Remember that? There was yeah, going to be a well, discretionary Well, the 1 percent cut, cut unfortunately, 1%. was only on a small sliver yeah. of government. I've been for the 1 percent across the board, That's but better. it has to include everything if you want to do anything, because all the money is in the entitlements. So you have to have 1 percent of everything. If you do that, you can actually gradually balance your budget over time. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad way to go. Thing is, Senator Paul, I mean, just could, a point. All this spending from Biden, $6 trillion, and then the CBO baseline, they're going to run another 4 or $5 trillion. It hasn't made people happier. It hasn't made us more prosperous. It has caused more inflation. I mean, that model of spending your keister off, I don't think it's done us any good. Nobody's happy in this country. And you see these polls. We've talked a lot about it on this show. Uh, you know, working families, whether you're 
African American or Latino or white or whoever, they're making less money now than they made under Trump. The spending's not helping anybody. So why do we do it? There's an illusion of wealth, and there's some stock market wealth, and the very yeah. wealthy have gotten wealthier. That's why when you look at the demographics of Republican support now, our best people are truck drivers. Our oh, best people right. are blue collar workers. Right. The people who run the unions don't support us, right. but you go to the assembly line in the Ford plant or the uh, Chevrolet plant, the GM plant, the workers are for us because their wealth is being eroded, their dollars being eroded. They can't afford the stakes they want to do, they can't afford the trips they want to take. The rich have gotten richer, but that's a, the dirty little secret of inflation. Mm. People get the money first, mm. invest it, make money off their investments. The people it trickles down to, get more money, but then their prices have right. risen to match their I increased wages. You're going to have great fun tonight. <laughs> Union. I can just hear it all over you. Yeah, Senator Rand yeah, Paul, thank right. you, sir. All right, As thank always, you. appreciate it.